Hi everyone, um, I am here. I, yeah, uh, I'm Crystal of crystal.knits on Instagram, Crystal Reads, no, Crystal Knits and Reads on TikTok, um, Books, Hooks and Yarn on Ravelry, and you have found the Crystal Knits knitting podcast vlog thing basically I sit down record myself I chat about my knitting sometimes my reading life and then I post it on YouTube and don't think about it again because honestly it's just a way for me to express how much I love knitting and yarn and reading and yeah so if you are here watching hello welcome thank you for joining me I've mentioned just before my name is Crystal I use she, her pronouns. I live in southeast Melbourne um, on Boonarong land. Um, it is Aboriginal land, always was, always will be. And in saying that, I'd like to pay my respects to my cat. No, I don't want to pay respects to my cat. That's my cat at the door. I should let her in because otherwise we're just going to hear that the whole time. Okay, that again. I get rid of the kids, but I still have the kids. I acknowledge the traditional owners of this land and their connection to land water and sky including the land that i work play and craft on uh, i pay my respect to elders past present and emerging um there was so many interruptions just then oh look and here's my number one interruption i managed to squirrel my children away because it is school holidays um so i popped them away in like my bedroom so i can have some uninterrupted time to get this done, but I forgot about the fair babies. Um, I don't have a lot to chat about today, even though it has been so long since I did the last time of these, and that's because my work-life balance sucks. It is non-existent. I um, work and work and work, and when I'm not at work, I am at home mummy. So my life is basically a juggling act between being a parent and being a teacher. Does not always leave a lot of time for my hobbies like reading and craft, uh, knitting. Um, I have to make time to go for runs, which I have dropped off a little bit at the moment because uh, my husband was traveling a lot for work. So I haven't been running as much as I would like to, but it's school holidays. So when school holidays arrive, I get to do all my things. So that has included last week, I just read if I was sitting, I was reading. I got through four books in one week, if I'm not mistaken. Most of them were on my Kindle, which my husband got for me for my birthday last year. Um, and I have not stopped reading since, thank goodness, for Amazon Unlimited. No, Kindle Unlimited, sorry. Um, so yeah, I have notes in my new little book. This just gives me a space to... It's basically empty. I've just started using it. I am trying to get better at the whole work-life balance thing. So I mentioned I've been making time for running when my husband's not traveling. I have also been making a lot more time for reading. So last term was only a nine-week term and I tried to read as much during that as I could because I really wanted to not be constantly thinking about work. Um, so every second night when it's my turn to put the kids to bed, we still have to sit with our youngest. So I normally take my Kindle or a book with, I've got like one of those around the neck lights. I did have book lights, but both my kids stole them. Um, so now the one that I use for my knitting that goes around my neck and has the little, these look so inappropriate, but the little bulbs at the end, the little light bulbs at the end, um, I hang that and I read with that if I'm not using my Kindle. Um, Sorry, I need a mouthful of coffee. I feel like I've talked a lot in the last four minutes. Oh, that's heaven. Never's gonna knit. Like my go-to um, hashtag on Instagram. Um, so this term, it's an 11 week term. It's a reporting term. I get very, very stressed during report writing season. Um, just because, not from the actual reports themselves, more about making sure I know exactly what my students know and they that I have um, concrete evidence that they know 
what they know. I can't just go, oh yeah, they know that. And me as a teacher be like, well, I've seen them do that. I know that they know that. Um, I need to have concrete proof because if anybody ever turns to me and goes, I don't agree with the grade you've given them, I have to be able to say, well, here's this, this, and this, and this is why I've given them this grade. Um, and we're not an assessment heavy year level this year. Last year, I had data out the wazoo and I loved having that as a backup. But then we used our teacher judgment 80% of the time. So if the data didn't show what they knew, we could go, but, you know, teacher judgment, I know they know this. And I've got this other evidence to prove it. Problem is, I am not always the most workbook heavy teacher. I use a lot of hands-on materials and whiteboards and um, just, oh, our, our interactive smart boards. Like the... I use a lot of that kind of stuff for them to show me their understanding as opposed to workbooks and worksheets. I freaking hate worksheets so much. I understand there are some concepts you need worksheets to do, like to teach the concept or for them to practice the concept. I don't ever use worksheets to teach. Why? Um, but sometimes they do need worksheets to practice the concept. I just loathe worksheets entirely. Anyway, you are here for knitting content, which I promise there is some, just not a lot. For example, this is my itty bitty page of my notes for today's for today's episode. Um, what I am working on is where I'm going to start because it's my favorite thing to knit on at the moment. And I've already done like two posts about it. So I have a small interruption. It's not that small. Yes. Um, and it is the No Frills Sweater by Petite Knits. Now, you can see I have a beautifully curated yarn collection here, yes? Hold on, let me turn you a little bit. There she is in all her stunningness. It's, it's full. The cupboard's full. There's very, very limited space in there. I'm okay with this about myself. I am well aware that I am a dragon. I hoard things and that buying yarn and using yarn two completely different hobbies. Um, in saying that, I did not use any of my gorgeous, gorgeous, expensive hand dyed yarn for this sweater. I still have quite the collection of acrylic and cotton yarns from when I first started knitting again during COVID and spotlight deliveries were very fast. And so was Oz yarn. And Oz yarn, I always had beautiful customer service from. So. I quite happily bought from them. I am using, it's just a 100% acrylic DK weight yarn uh, in this green color. I'm knitting from the inside of the ball, so it's already deflated. Um, why am I knitting in acrylic? Well, this is my first ever me-sized jumper. I have never had, I have started jumpers multiple times. Um, I have started three times the Ursa sweater by Jacqueline Seaslack, I want to say. I probably said that completely wrong. Um, but because I love her sizing and her grading. Yeah. But I think maybe the yarn I was using didn't lend itself nicely to that pattern. It's quite rustic. I didn't love knitting it. It was also very dark charcoal grey and made it really hard to see any mistakes that I made and I was also so determined to make it perfect because I um, I was knitting a woolen jumper and I wanted it to be perfect. This one, it's acrylic and it's my first time knitting one and I'm giving myself a bit more grace to make mistakes. Um, it's my practice as it were. Um, I am loving the process. Petite knits are so easy to follow. Um, I know people have had issues in the past with the plus size grading on it, um, but it's my practice and it's a free pattern. So I'm being a bit more lenient, I guess. I, if I had paid for a pattern, I absolutely would be more finicky about it. So far, it's going well. I am knitting the 2XL. I ummed and erred about doing the one, like the XL, the 2XL, the 3XL. I wasn't really sure. I remember doing it like a 4XL, I think it was, or maybe 3XL. Test knit, um, the Twisted T, uh, the Twisted T, might have just been called the Twisted T, um, by Wolf Knits. 
Oh, I might have got that wrong. I'll put it here. Um, I did a size too big than what from what I thought I actually needed. And the neckline actually sits quite low. Like my, so this is obviously right at the base of my neck. My bra strap is here. And for that shirt, which I was going to wear today, but got too cold, it does sit like that, which I don't hate. Um, I just remember when I first wore it the first couple of times, it did keep slipping quite a lot. I'm a little bit concerned that's going to happen with this one again. But I thought, oh, the, based on the measurements, I'm like, oh, the 2XL will be fine. But I don't know. I think I'm going to have the same problem. Um, I am literally, check my extensive notes. Um, one, two, three, and a bit rounds away from splitting the sleeves. Sorry, I'm very excited. My goal these holidays was to split the sleeves. So this seems like quite a deep yoke. Like my underarm is here, but I'm hoping this is going to be a really nice oversized baggy jumper because that was kind of my goal when I was looking through the patterns. I wanted something big and oversized. So this is probably hit it. But if I do knit this again, which I will because practice, um, I would probably go to the XL. Now, my concern is I did this based on my chest size. I didn't really check the arm size and stuff. I should have. Um, I do have a large chest. This is the size to fit my chest. But I then have... Um, I don't know how to explain this. I have a large chest out this way, but I don't have a large chest this way. Like, I'm still quite narrow here. Um, I do have larger arms, but like this is a store-bought jumper. This is from Typo. I got this as a birthday present from my family last year and it fits quite well. Um, I can fit this into a jacket, no problem. Like there's like a, I don't think there's like there's maybe a centimeter of positive ease between my underarm and where it ends, but it doesn't feel constricting. Like no problems. Um, yeah, so I'm a little bit concerned about the fit. But practice. So I am trying to take as many notes as I can. And once I slip for the sleeves, I'm going to try it on, see how it fits for depth in the arms and everything like that. Um, I will probably ask on here again after I've figured out the fit and I've finished and everything for future recommendations for getting it to fit a bit better if the fit is a problem. But I'm jumping ahead of myself and assuming it's going to be a problem. I should just wait and see. So, yes, this is the No Frost Sweater by Petite Knits. Um, now, this is where I'm telling myself, I'm giving myself grace. I suck. I am, I am fully aware of this. At weaving my ends in as I go when I've joined in a new ball. So, I'm hoping this will block out because it looks appalling at the moment. Um, you can see where the yarn has been pulling on itself. Right here. And that's where I have been weaving in my ends as I go. Now, my theory is I could probably just unweave it all. See here, it's actually completely fine. This last bit, no issues whatsoever. But this part here, I'm honestly considering I just unweave it. Or do I block it when I'm finished first, see if it, because if it doesn't, then unweave it. It's an option. Um, I've also done it further down here. So that's the front and that's the inside. This one's not as bad. I have a feeling that one will just block out. Um, but yeah, I am not great at weaving in new ends. I feel like I've done another one, but then I can't remember how many balls I'm up to, to be honest. Mm, nope. I swear I just finished weaving one in and went, okay, that's enough. I've done enough of that. Oh, right here. There is one here. So this one is there. See, that one looks much better. Now, my only concern with these is that I had the same issue on the Twisted T test knit that I did. Um, but it was in the back, so I really didn't care because I was like, oh, it's cute AF and I can't see it. So who cares? But this one's on the front. Really hope it blocks out. All right, that's my plan. If it doesn't block out, I'm just going to unweave it figure out a new way to sew in my end so it's not as visible. What I should have done is 
joined the new ball in near the seam and then each time I was doing the seam I should have just or so I could sew it in at the, at the seam there because that would have at my um, increases because that would have been less noticeable but I'm an empty and I didn't think to do that so learning curves right all right so I don't have it in a bag at the moment because I'm literally just knitting on that whenever I have a chance to at home um I do have some other works in progress not a lot because that's been my main priority. I've just got to find which back it's in. Nope. Oh, this one looks promising. I think it's in here. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. This is the Frida headband. I think I showed this in the last episode that I did. I can't quite remember. I was there. I was back here. I should remember because I've made a mistake. That I don't care about. I'm just gonna make sure that's on the inside. Um, so I remember that's where I was up to. So I haven't done a lot on this, mostly because the mohair that I'm using sheds like crazy. It's driving me a little bit bananas. Like you can see how fuzzy this is. It's just it gets everywhere. And I normally wear a lot of black. I'm actually wearing black pants right now. So I don't really want to um knit on this right now. I try to make this like a um, first thing in the morning, every three days or so when I know my pajamas going in the wash, I knit on this and then I can put my pajamas in the wash. Um, I am using this cute little progress marker by um, Ali of Fiberbound. Uh, it's just so pretty and it matches the color so nicely. Uh, the yarn I'm using, I've actually, believe it or not, managed to Grab out my, if this is the shell by Dragonfly Yarn, it's a merino nylon mix leftover from my shellography. So I'm using that. This mohair is leftover from a test knit that I did for Astrid um, for her entwined beanie, which I absolutely loved. Oh God, that was a beautifully finished beanie. I can't wait to wear it this winter actually. For Yard Judy, it's going to be divine. Um, so I'm holding them together to get my beautiful fuzzy headband. Um, my goal is to have this finished for this autumn because it feels like a cold autumn, but I don't always love having my hair completely fit, covered, um, especially when I work. Um, this doesn't feel like it'll be itchy. It's actually incredibly soft, so I think it'll be fine because it actually goes... Actually, I can show you. Oh, actually, does the pattern have a photo of... I don't know if the pattern has a photo of a model wearing it. I have it open now. Did you know you could put knitting patterns on Kindles? Um, so on Ravelry, if you go to like the little share icon, um, you can share it to the Kindle app and then it puts it into your Kindle library, which is just like a dream come true. Oh, so that's what the band will look like. Sorry, it's in black and white. I don't have one of the fancy colored Kindles. Um, it doesn't show the model wearing it, but what I love is this cool construction. It's a free pattern by the way, so I don't mind sharing this. Um, the construction is like you take the ends you fold them and like slip them into each other and then you sew it up and it comes up with that really cool little twist and I was like well that's genius I have been knitting this for a while I don't know why it's taking so long probably because it's a double knit um which I do enjoy doing you get into a good rhythm with it and it creates a beautiful fabric like that's so beautiful and thick um but yes it is taking a while it is quite stretchy I just don't think it's anywhere near ready yet though no, I've still got a few inches to go. So I want it to be tight, but not too tight. I'd like to cover my ears. So I think I'm going to go for a longer length. Yeah, that's going to be cute. Um, that's that one. I don't know what I did. I need to wash my hair. I did honestly think about postponing this until tomorrow. Oh, there might be a few little edits in here too, because... Um, I have some things happening tomorrow that I wanted to talk about, but I also wanted, I've got other things on tomorrow. I was like, oh, I'll sit down and do the bulk of today, of the episode today, and then I can add the extra stuff in. It's just deliveries. I just want to show you what I get. Um, all right. Second last whip. I am knitting a pair of DK Shorty socks by, I want to say Woolfield Studios. It's like the only DK sock pattern that I ever knit, the DK Shorties. Um, I have so many patterns on here. I actually have to sort my books into like Kindle Unlimited patterns and I've just got other ones that aren't in collections because 
they're not patterns or Kindle Unlimited, they're probably just books. These are doo -doo -doo. Uh, how have I not put them in here? Oh, because I've got it as unread. <laughs> I've read this pattern so many times. The Woolfield Simple DK Shorty Socks. So these are by Nicole Bracey of Woolfield. Um, these ones. I absolutely love these socks. Uh, they, I normally do a size large because of my ankle injury. Um, I keep saying that like it's something that happened recently. It was like three years ago now. But the side effects of the surgery and completely destroying all the ligaments in my ankle and having plastic and that are hold it all together now are going to affect me for the rest of my life. One ankle is significantly larger than the other. So I do have to, unless I want to knit two different size socks, I don't want to do. Um, I normally just knit the larger pair and it's a little bit, it's, it's fine though, because like all socks, most socks have ribbing on the cuff. So, I mean, it holds it fine to my other ankle anyway. Um, so I am knitting these for me. I have included five rounds in between the cuff and the heel flap because normally with this pattern you go straight from heel uh, cuff to heel flap. I added five extra rounds in just because I'm trying to use up the yarn. Um, they look absolutely stunning. I'm in love with these. I don't know why I put them down, but this is my out of the house knitting. So if I'm going anywhere, I can put my... Oh, hold on. I've got it. I can loop my bag and take it with me in my gorgeous little... Sean's yarns sausage dog bag because we know I am a wrong end sausage dog fan. These are my babies. Jessie, come here. Jess, Jessamine, Jessamine, Jessamine. She's not impressed with me at the moment. I didn't let her sleep on my bed last night. The kids were having a sleepover in the lounge room, so I was like, the dogs can sleep out with you lot tonight and I can have one night where I'm not fighting for my life to get a little bit of space. So she's not impressed. Oh, you beat me. No. She's gotten so big. She's three now. Hi, baby. Hello, darling. Oh, good to go back to sleep. All right. Um, so, uh, I was talking about socks. <laughs> uh, I'm doing two yarns together. One of them is a Lovebird Lane. This green and purple. There we go. Very pretty. I've had this for so long. I've actually had it caked up for so long as well, to the point that I was worried the skein was going to be damaged. But it's fine. Um, for the life of me, I cannot remember the name. I'll pop it down here if I can find it in my Ravelry stash. Um, and this is a, my, the grey that's left over from my shellography as well, using up all my scraps. Uh, this is Fog Bound by Dyed by Hand Yarns in uh, Sock Yarn. Um, yes. Ah, don't run away from me. I need another pair of socks to talk about in my finished objects that I held two... Sh I did not hold two strands together. I was just really enjoying doing DK shorties and I gifted them even though I was originally knitting them for myself. Um... And I was so sad that I gifted another pair of socks that I needed for myself because this is the second time that's happened um, that I decided I would just quickly, immediately, that same day that I gifted them, start a new pair. So uh, this is only the first sock. I haven't done a lot on it, to be honest. One thing I do love about this sock, though, and I noticed this with the last pair that I made, I am getting very neat at the picking up. Nope, pick up stitches on the heel flap, isn't it? That must be the decreases. Is that right? I think that's right. Um, I used to be horrific at this, like to the point there used to be a gigantic hole in the corner there that I would have to sew up. There is a tiny one here. I don't think I'm even gonna bother sewing it up because why would I bother? Um, but yeah, I am very proud of how neatly I can do this now because it used to be a big struggle. That's actually why I kind of gravitated towards doing sock tubes because I was like, I don't have to do the whole pick up stitches, decreases thing. I can just pick up stitches and cut the yarn because that seems so much simpler than that. But I think maybe because it's DK weight yarn and it's a bit thicker, it's a lot easier. So at the moment, I'm just knitting my rounds for the feet. I do have a certain amount of rounds that I do for this pattern. I have no idea if I've written it down or if I just 
Hmm. Let's have a look-see. I like that I can put notes on here. So I've done that for the heel flap. Mm -hmm. I did not put in here how many times I was going to. Mm -mm. How many rounds I was going to do. Nope. Haven't done it, unfortunately. Um, I have put extensive notes in there about my toe recipe because I do a different toe than what's in the pattern. All right, so those are my take out of the house socks, my knitting that I'm taking at the moment. Uh, I'm actually going somewhere this Friday with my husband for our 10 year wedding anniversary. I've been married for 10 years on Friday. How am I even that old? I'm actually not that old because I got married when we were 24. So that's how. <laughs> So, but yeah, 10 years, married, this Friday. I can't believe it. We're, um, we're the disgustingly into each other couple. Sometimes I hate us. When we're out in public, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, people. But oh, I freaking love him. He's my best friend. And he's the biggest goofball. And people don't expect it. But he's actually just, like, the biggest nerd. Like... I may have had a little bit of an influence. All these books that you see, okay, admittedly, the ones directly behind me, they're all mine. Yes. This shelf over here, that top shelf is all his. He only just started reading last year. Those are his books. Uh, and he's read a lot of them, unlike me, who has quite a lot of TBRs in here. Um, I ended up having to take over this middle shelf because I ran out of room and I actually have more books in our walk-in robe. Um, but I'm trying to convince him to turn some portion of our house into a library. He's just not on board with it yet. And then we've got like our fancy cookbooks and things and Lego and a wedding photo. So, yeah. Um, and then the other cabinet, which I probably will take over at some point, is Lego because him and our children adore Lego. I actually hate the stuff. I can't stand that sound when you have to like sort through it all to find that one piece that you need. Oh, it's like nails on a chalkboard for me. Mm -mm. Ugh. No, no, thank you. But I also get sensory overload with sounds. So that probably has a lot to do with it. Um, what else? Oh, I have one last thing to do that I have been sort of actively working on. I have been actively working on. This is, this was my obsession for a little while, which is why I got so many squares done. Um, during the term, I started a coziest memories blanket. So this is just lots of little scraps that I had left over from various projects. I love that I can look at them and know what most of them are from. So this was actually a little bit of leftover from a shawl that my mum made me. Um, this, I don't think I've ever knit that before. I think that was a, oh, hold on. That could be, let's check. Remember my advent? Advent knitting shawl thing that I was doing. Oh, I don't think there's any yellow in that, so I don't think it's from that. I think I'm just talking rubbish. Nope, it's not from any Advent knitting that I've done. It could just be a random little mini because I decided to pull out any random minis I had, leftover scraps, lots of stuff. So I don't. Oh, but now I'm thinking I have used it. If I have used it, I'll pop it here. If not, it's just a random mini, okay? Um, what else have I used here already? I know the sparkle one was a random mini because that was just like a little random mini that came with an order. Um, this one was with my second sock syndrome sock swap that I did um, that Anna of Stitchcraft and Wizardry held. Ooh, I want to say four-ish years ago. Um, she was my swap partner and we both did like a grey, black, yellow theme. I'll put a photo of the socks here because it actually turned out so cute. Um, and this was one of the colorways that we used for the main color. Well, for one of the socks anyway. We, um, I really loved what we did. It was so cute. Um, and I actually used her yarn for the body of my sock. Um... And then she used her yarn for hers and they actually ended up looking so cute together. I absolutely loved them. Now these three are from my Advent knitting. One, two, and three, actually, that could be one as well. Or it's from a recent Advent. Hmm, I can't remember. But either way, it looks really nice together and I am 
like coordinating my colors a little bit because I don't want it to be something that I hate looking at. So I'm not doing them in like order of when I got them or stuff like that. I'm just picking out a color that I think looks nice with the next lot. I'm using most of it. If I've got like a little five gram mini left, I'm using most of that. Um, but if it's a 10 gram mini or more, because some of them like this, I had tons of this left. I didn't just have five grams of it left, but I used five grams of it in the blanket, which is nice. Um, one thing I'll say about this blanket, I love the pattern. I struggle a little bit, not in every single square for some reason, but um, with the picking up the edges and joining on the next square, some of the edges I absolutely suck at. And for some reason, obviously I'm doing it backwards, like the picking up part, because I end up with this part on the front instead of that beautiful join. So obviously I know I'm doing something backwards. I just don't care enough to go back and fix it because it's a blanket. She cute. Who cares if you can see that scene? Like, honestly, <laughs> it's so cute. Um, I just have a little rose stitch marker on there, a uh, progress keeper on there so I can know which is my front and which is my back in case, you know, the ends weren't enough of a clue. Can't wait to sew those in. Um, I am knotting my joins as I go because I was just terrified that something was going to unwind as I'm like progressing through the blanket. But yes, that's just a slow, easy going. I probably won't be showing this each episode that I do, even though they're like three, four, five, 12 months apart because who knows how much progress that'll be. But I just wanted to share it with you because I was so excited to start one and to have enough scraps to start one. <laughs> so yeah, um, eventually at some point, if I get enough DK knitting done, I might even attempt a DK one because I haven't done that yet. Probably because I don't actually own a lot of DK yarn. <coughs> I have a lot of fingering my yarn. I reorganized my knitting cupboard a little while ago and I actually tried to do it by dyers. So up the top I have, I think I have a mix there. I think I have um, Obsession Yarns and ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, that could actually be mostly Obsession Yarns. Um, I have a big chunk of yarn by Jane. I have... Uh, what is that stuff? I'm not sure. There's a big chunk of yarn that I've dyed, which I did not realize how much of that I had. That was terrifying. Um, yeah, I tried to keep it as organized as possible. It didn't always work out the way it was supposed to. There is a lot of Three Cats yarn in there as well. I'm just not sure which section it is. Hmm. Which is weird because I can normally tell Mel's yarn from a mile away. Oh, that could be it there. Underneath my yarn. So I've put like mine and Mel's together. Yes, because that's her Halloween minis up there, which I freaking love. So yeah. Sorry, I digress. Hmm. Then I have like right down the bottom, I have my like Bendigo Wool and Mills spotlight, but actual wool and like a recycled tweed one and my cones of number wool and mills in there as well. But um, yeah, I just thought I would mention that because I can. I mean, where else am I gonna talk about it? If not here. Um, that's all of my whips I'm actively working on. I am about to start a bunch more. So this is the future knits. Um, I, would love to just sit here and knit and drink my coffee while I'm talking to you about this stuff, but I need my hands to show you the yarn. Uh, I frogged. I was doing the magic number blanket uh, for a friend's baby. Well, it's actually my husband's boss's baby. Uh, her and her wife ended up having a little boy and he's absolutely gorgeous. And my husband is like his favorite person in the entire world. It's so cute. I've gotten like photos of him sitting at my husband's desk pretending to work. It's just, oh, thank goodness my husband had a vasectomy because we would have so many kids by now. <sighs> thank goodness we don't though, because what do you even do with them? Two is so much work already. Um, I frogged his blanket because I wasn't sure I had enough yarn to finish the blanket to a decent enough size. 
Um, I have since ordered extra of the yarn. I may end up just redoing the blanket, but bigger because I previously had um, these colors. Hold on, I've still got it in the bag. It got came delivered in. I got this from Little Woolies Makes in Hastings. This is like the Bellissimo 8. Um, and this is the order of the colors I'm going to do. So it's going to be the beige, sage, and white. Um, so I'd already done the beige. I was pretty much finished with the sage. And then I had the white to go. And it just wasn't going to be big enough. So I've ordered more, two more 50 gram skeins of each one. And I think I'm just going to start the blanket over again. So unless I can find another really cute blanket that takes three colors, um, which I've been scouring Ravelry. I don't want to pay for a pattern though. I just want to do a free one because it's just for a kid to spit up on. I mean, he's one now, so he probably won't be spitting up. But still, like on the floor, crawling around, kids are gross. In the best way, but kids are gross. Um, so I'm probably just going to go back into the Magic Number, but have the extra yarn there so I can make it to a bigger size. So, because you do it based on the cut like basically you use all of the beige and then you switch to the green and then you switch to this or you use half the green and then you because you're increasing because it's corner to corner so you start with the beige when you run out you do the green and you use half of the green and then with the other half of the green you start decreasing and then finish off with the white so that should be all good um i'm just keeping that in my bag here by lovely little yarns because i love this bag she big, she pretty. Um, so that's a future knit. I'm just waiting for the yarn to get here, which I will unbox and show you because I love little woolly makes. Um, and then the other thing I'm waiting on yarn for is another baby blanket. My hairdresser's having a baby. She's having a boy. Um, she just did my hair in last Wednesday, which is why I haven't washed it yet because I'm waiting a week until um, until it's been a week so I can wash it because um, red. Uh, the dye just still just goes everywhere. So I like to wait as long as possible between washes when I've just freshly had it done. Um, and she and I get along so well. It's insane. So I may have mentioned to her that I would like to knit her something. And yeah, now I've committed myself. <laughs> she wouldn't mind if I didn't. But next school holidays, because I get my head on every school holidays because of work-life balance, um, I don't have time to go at some point after work. And I don't want to make her wait work that late either. She already works like two late nights. I don't want to have to add it to her. Um, so I will get something done. It's going to have to be my priority. I've, I'm still waiting for the yarn to arrive, so it's fine. But as soon as it does, because I ordered... She's also doing like a sage green and browns theme for their... Um, nursery because they're also having a boy I don't know if I mentioned that um I haven't picked a baby blanket pattern I don't know if I'm going to I have like the Japanese stitch bible I think I'm just going to pick a stitch I'm thinking moss stitch to be honest might be the nicest one and I'm just going to knit a blanket for her um the colors I have color I picked I will show you when it arrives because it should be arriving this week I will unbox it show you pop it into this video um I am also going to be making her some on the go overalls. It's a pattern that I've got in my Ravelry library. Um, excuse me. Talking too much, drinking not enough. Mm. I have had this recycled tweed yarn in my stash since Two of Wands released the sl hanging slouchy basket pattern thing. Pop it here. It's so cute. I bought the yarn. From the pattern which I've never done before in my life it was so expensive um I totally understand why people wait to buy the recommended yarn on sale or just switch yarns um I was so traumatized by the price of that that I have never done it again um it is a 40% wool 40% polyester 20% acrylic blend it's machine washable and dryable so I thought I would use this and make some on the go overalls so they're just baby overalls I'll pop a picture here they're really cute um I don't think I've put it into my Kindle library already. No, I haven't, but that's okay. Um, so that's my plan. I might actually try and get this cast on this week so I can just pick them up and go at any given point when I'm tired of blanket knitting. So I want to have the overalls, 
um, and the blanket. I'm wondering, so the baby's due in September. I'm wondering if I do booties and a beanie or if I do them in like a bigger size for next winter. It's still quite cool here in September. I wouldn't say it's warm enough to take a baby outside without extra layers. So yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm going to see how I go with the gophers. I'm going to do the newborn size first. Um, and then if I've got enough yarn, because I've got four of these, um, I'll maybe do a bigger size as well, just so extra seasons. Um, yeah, that's my future knits, all baby related because, yeah. Uh, finished objects. I do actually have some. I mentioned I knitted some DK shorties that I ended up gifting to my mother-in-law. She ended up going to hospital to have a surgery, like she had vertebrae fused in her neck. So I ended up going, I was knitting the socks to my husband. And I goes, oh, my mum would really love those. Like, well, I guess they're now your mum's. And I finished them in six days. I think my hands were cramping because it was the first bit of knitting I had done in a long time. Um, but I got them done and I gifted to them them oh was it six days maybe it was only three i'll put it here um and i gifted them to her in hospital and immediately started my other ones uh i'll pop a picture here they were beautiful they were some of my favorite socks to knit it was i used the sophie's garden i think it's called by um mel of three cats yarn and then i had um some leftover cameo i think from a bee no from my oh that cow that i knit that was um the brioche can't wait to wear that again this year um yeah it was leftover cameo from dragonfly yarn it's like a dk weight pretty pink it's so gorgeous i use that for the cuffs and toes because i had enough left over for that so i did it um i feel like i've talked so much i have been doing so much reading it's insane um so i'm currently making my way through Da, 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 da. the throne of glass series which is here i've got the next book just sitting there empire of storms that's what i'm up to I haven't cracked it open because the way the last book ended so the one before that which was what queen of app ah, queen of fire queen of i can't remember whichever one it was before um <coughs> it ended and i know there's way more to come but it didn't end in like a cliffhanger kind of way i had to pick up the next book to start which is fine because I honestly have been using this week to knit. So it's been good. I liked this whole read for the first week, knit for the second week. It's worked out well. I will probably pick it up in the next week or two because um, I will need something to do while I'm putting my little ears to bed. Um, I suppose I could just talk about life blather now. Um, oh, apart from those books, I've also been reading a lot on my Kindle. I have... Kindle Unlimited, so I tend to borrow a lot of books and read those. Um, but I have a lot of rubbish on here that I'm trying to get rid of because um, I did like one of those Stuff Your Kindle Days and every single book I've read from that Stuff Your Kindle Day has been absolute trash. And I don't know, don't mean that in a, oh, it was awful, but I loved it kind of a way, like Twilight and all that stuff, but it's just been awful. And I unfortunately like to torture myself. And if I start a book, I finish it. So that's been just not enjoyable. One that I really enjoyed reading was called The Leaving. I have a student who is in high school now. She's in year eight. And she still comes to visit me. So um, she actually wasn't my student. She was just a student from the school. Um, hold on. I'm trying to. Could you just go back for me, please? How do I... It's got to be a way to go back to the beginning without sitting here and scrolling through all the pages. Oh, that would be how. <laughs> I'm still learning how to use this. All right, so it's The Cl the Leaving by Tara Altabrando. Six were taken, five came back. It's a young adult teen read, but I really enjoyed it. The um, actual, like, how it set out. Totally lost the words of what I'm trying to think of. Um, it's designed to to 
unbalance your equilibrium while you're reading so you feel like that's what the characters are feeling like and it does it very well um so yeah been reading a lot on that reading a lot of books from my shelf buying a lot of books that are also now on my shelf hoping if i just keep adding to the shelves my husband won't notice that they're like all of this here all brand new <laughs> i haven't read any of them but yeah it's amazing how those shelves were empty and now they are not um what's been going on my eldest daughter started soccer so she now has training once a week matches on the weekend which starts next term thankfully we've had a term without matches yet so it's gonna be my sunday's gone um the youngest is doing tap jazz and ballet and she starts gymnastics next term because apparently we don't need to have lives and they're both still doing swimming lessons um chip is in with the girls i'm pretty sure he's an absolute nightmare of a dog he is such a love bug but he's so naughty he's the cutest like he knows he knows he's not allowed up to the table but he'll deliberately sit behind our youngest daughter and put his head on her shoulder while she's eating to make it look like he's cuddling her just to lunge out and nab a bit of food off of her fork if she's waving it around and not paying attention to what she's doing um but she's like no leave him there he loves me and i love him and we're best friends and i'm like He's just after your food. So he's not quite a year old yet. Um, we did get him desexed, so that was good. Uh, trying to get him to sit still so that he could heal was a challenge. Um, Jazzy's the best girl. Put my Kindle down so I don't knock it again. Jazzy's the best girl. She's put on a little bit of weight, so we're, she's on a diet at the moment, and we are trying to walk her as much as possible. But it is now autumn. And if it's not raining, it looks like it's going to rain and you're just too scared to do anything or go anywhere. And it's cold. It's a mite, like 16 degrees or something like that today. So I'm already in jumpers. I actually have to clean up my walk-in robe uh, this week before we go back to school next week so I can get all my knits ready because it's going to be a cold term and I can just feel it. Um, hopefully my jumper's done sooner rather than later. Um, I did mention I'm teaching grade four. I actually have a little video I can pop in here. Um, because I set up my classroom over the Christmas holidays. Um, and then one day I went to work and I was a bit early and I was feeling cute. So I took a little video and showed you around my classroom. But some of it has changed since then. So I might do an updated one for next episode. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Um, I've been completely bombarded and haven't been able to show you my classroom at all. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, this is my desk area, so it's got all the cute things and my laptop and everything. It's clean at the moment because it's the start of the term. I'll show you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> uh, this is my welcome board, which I've already put a photo up of, so I put my notices and forms and office stuff there. This is like our daily bulletin board, so I'll have the calendar, the weekly jobs, and I'm going to add like a daily riddle or puzzle or word of the day or something down there because that'd be cute. Uh, we have a sink at the back, washing hands, my conference table, which is already a mess because I've had students sitting at it. There we go. Uh, this is the main room, so it's quite big. I have 23 students in grade four. I'm teaching grade four this year, by the way. Um, there, it is a big room. We don't have a lot of floor space, though, for some reason. Probably because there's so much furniture and stuff in here because there's no storage, so I had to bring all my own stuff in. Um, so... It's a big mess. Um, they sometimes sit on the floor. They sometimes sit at the tables. I'm really flexible. Um, I'm still doing a Disney theme. I'm heavily focused on stitch this year. So this is my little stitch lanyard. It's really good for like that time of the month. So I can store my feminine products in there while I'm like out on yard duty and stuff. Um, this is our reading corner. A lot of books in there already. It's not quite finished, but it's getting there. Um, I like to provide them with like bookmarks for reading and I've just made a bunch of stitch ones so I have to put those in this morning because I've got some time release uh, it gets really hot in here my air conditioning doesn't always work so we are working through that uh, this is where I will have all their books when they need to be marked but currently it's my lab reading station uh, my pant babies and yeah we're getting there it's not completely set up yet but I like it so far hmm. um if there's anything specific that I wanted to show you, 
I will find a way. Oh, one thing I always have on my desk though is my knitting. I haven't had a chance to do any yet, but it's here if I want it, which is better than wanting it and not having it. So, yeah. Um, I do like my class this year. I have 23 students. Have a lot of strong personalities. I have the biggest classroom in the school, but I also have the some of the biggest personalities. They are full on and a lot of them don't get along. I have like seven or eight different separations I have to do in the classroom at all times. My mind is just constantly worrying. I'm doing head checks, making sure everyone's in the room, making sure people that aren't allowed to be near each other aren't anywhere near each other. On top of my usual actual teaching and making sure everyone's learning something, running small groups. It's just like running a zoo sometimes, but I love teaching grade four. So I've previously only taught grade two. When I got grade four this year, I was excited, but petrified. Um, no, the content in grade four is so much more interesting. We have, uh, our, we're covering like part of the history curriculum next term. And we are covering like the first fleet and the effects of colonization and um, indigenous collection, that uh, connection to land, water and sky and stuff like that. And, um, I'm planning all that stuff. So my idea for like our second day back this term is, hey, why don't we get them all to dress up as convicts and pretend we're on the first fleet ship coming to invade Australia? So I have a captain's costume. Here is a photo, ignore the face. <laughs> I'm such a dork, but I love this stuff. Like if I can't do this stuff, what was the point of me spending four years and $80,000 in hex debt to become a teacher? So yeah, bit of fun. I can't wait. And uh, I'm doing a stitch themed classroom this year. Uh, it's still, no, sorry, it's Disney, but it's heavily stitch themed because I have a lot of stitch stuff and I was gifted a lot of stitch stuff. So I was like, I just, let's just run with it. Let's go. And obviously I do love stitch. Uh, Beauty and the Beast is actually my favourite Disney movie, but Stitch is like my favourite uh, non-Disney princess character and my favourite non-Disney princess movie. So, yeah. Um, speaking of, I watched the new one, Wish, the other day with my daughters. I just went last Wednesday, got my hair done. My hairdresser, Emily, was telling me she'd started watching it that morning. It was really good. She didn't want to come to work because it was so good. Um, so I came home and watched it straight away and it was so good. My daughter and I predicted who the villain was going to be from the first minute but it was still really surprising I really enjoyed it and all the little easter eggs of all the other Disney movies that are in it oh, I want to watch it a second time just to see if I can spot them all because it was so good um not a lot's been going on my husband travels a lot for work now it's part of his job now so we have quite a lot of extended periods without him which sucks but we pull up our big girl pants and we get it done um I have started posting on TikTok because I said I like the whole scrolling and watching other people do it and it inspires me to be more creative and I get a bit bored posting on Instagram all the time so I feel like TikTok is going to be my place to be really silly and Instagram can be my more aesthetic not that I really have an Insta aesthetic but if I ever feel like developing one that's where it'll be posted uh, and TikTok yeah I can just be a bit silly and make silly videos and I just like having multiple platforms that I can reach other crafters on. So that's nice. Um, and TikTok has a lot of crocheters. Like I love watching all the plushies and stuff. That, oh my God, so cute. I actually want to try and teach myself how to crochet little plushy things this year because I normally pay my mum to make them for my end of year gifts in my class. And she's now working full time in a high school. So she might not have the time this year. So I'm going to try and teach myself so I can do my own end of year gifts this year. Last year she did these things called Octo Jellies. Um, they were so cute. They had like a little jellyfish body, but like spiraled tentacles and like extra little yarny bits hanging out. It was so cute. I don't even know if I have a photo, but if I do, I'll put one here. I don't think I do though. I'll probably have to wait till I get back to school because she always makes me one as well. And it's hanging on one of my lanyards because I have a collection of lanyards. Um, the year before she had like little black and yellow or ye brown and yellow bees. And that year, I'm actually reteaching that cohort this year. So I've got to make sure I don't redo something I've already done. I'm trying to find something that's just one colour. 
I'm thinking of the emotional support pickle. Um, but yeah, I think uh, an emotional support pickle would be really cute. And then it's got like this little, like I can make a little card that goes with it that says you're a big deal because they know I love my puns. And I'm, oh, it's either going to be that or corn because it's corn. Like who doesn't love a corny pun? I, I just love puns and my class know this. I have like punny stickers that I stick on their work. Like way all done and you're a big deal and... Um, Oh, what was the... I'm nutty about this and it's like a little squirrel. Like, so cute. So yeah, um, I don't know, it's just going to be something... I did find a, like a stitch key ring, but I don't think my skill level is going to be that. That might have to wait a few years if I do a stitch theme multiple years in a row. Um, I could find just like a really simple Mickey head, I guess. Or it'd just be three circles, right? I could do that. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Um, I think I've gone through everything I wanted to. I'm hoping the next time I do this, I'm aiming for next school holidays. If I get a chance to do it in between, I absolutely will. My youngest does ballet for an hour and a half every weekend. So, well, she does ba ballet, tap and jazz all together. Um, it's an hour and a half. I'm sitting in the car doing nothing. I could record that. Could I do crystal knits in the car? Maybe I should give that a go next week and we'll see how we go. I don't think I'd be able to talk for an hour and a half because it would only have been a week and I wouldn't have that much to talk about. But I could do crystal knits in the car. Why don't we make it a date? I'll try this the next time she has ballet tap and jazz. It's actually in two weeks. We'll give it a go. We'll see how it goes. We could hate it, but it could be the best thing we've ever done. So let's give it a go. I don't know why I'm saying we, because I'm the one that's going to do it. You're just going to come along for the experience. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. My coffee has gone absolutely cold. I'm going to drink it anyway. I'm sorry if I talked too fast. I just was so excited to sit down here and share stuff with you. I'm yeah. Thank you so much for spending your precious, precious time with me and listening to my rambles. Um, <clears throat> I'm not even going to bother trying to edit this right now because I still have things to add into it and other videos to pop in and deliveries to unbox. But um, thank you for giving me a place to do this. Even if no one watches it, it's still nice to be able to take it all from here and here and put it all on here and just... <sighs> thank you. Um, hi, so it is the next day, hence the different hair. I washed it last night. I couldn't last the four weeks since getting my hair cut. I had to, yeah, it was a bit gross. Do you want to come over? Come on. Come on. I know you've got little chipolata legs. You can tell I wasn't actually inviting you. You were all warm and snug on the couch already. It's chipadoo. Is that hi? All right, ready? Up we go. Oh, you're such a big boy. Oh, no, out of my face. Put... Oh. <laughs> Oh, gross. We're crooked. And I've got dog saliva up my nose. And this is Jippy. He's such a big boy. He is a... I think I mentioned this in a previous episode. He's a big ear cross cavoodle. So we call him... A cav... Cavoogalier? I feel like I've said that wrong. Hmm. Ow. Um, basically, yeah. He's mostly beagle. Um, he's not a cavoodle, he's a schnoodle cross <laughs> beagleia. So we call him a schnoogleia. That's why I was like, it doesn't sound right. You're a schnoogleia. So he's schnauzer cross poodle and beagle cross cavalier. Um, <laughs> you, you're just all around good boy, aren't you? He's actually very naughty. Yes, you're very naughty, but you're very cute and you're just a baby. So he's quite longer. Like in the legs and jazzy, he's very leggy. Uh, about the same length body, but he doesn't have the weird sausage dog shape. He's just good size for hugs. Um, he's beautiful. He's very, very soft, which is the either puppy fur or the um, like the poodle and cavalier mix because very soft. Like his bum is just the in his ears. He's so soft. And Jazzy's getting very jealous right now. Um, I didn't get on here to talk about my dogs. I'm actually going to put him down because I got two deliveries. And I wanted to... 
un <laughs> do them like unwrap them with you with you all but um it just like it's nothing exciting it's just the yarn that i have for those future projects for the baby in it so i want to show you that i mentioned already so oh jesse you're sitting on it so this is my one from spotlight this should be the yarn for emily's baby's blanket ah. to open pull apart oh. uh -huh. i know how to open the package Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, so I end up ordering the Moda Vera Harris. It's 100% polyester because I know as a parent, I would like, I like being able to just throw my kids crocheted blankets and knitted blankets and stuff straight into the washing machine, straight into the dryer, not having to worry about it. I do currently have like a rack full of knitwear. Like it's not, I haven't knitted any of it. No, I lie. There's a pair of knitted socks there um, that I have hung out to dry because I didn't want to put them all into the dryer because I do try not to. But blankets, yeah. Um, it is... Hmm, it doesn't actually tell me what it is apart from so it's for six millimeter needles is 130 meters per 100 grams that's not a lot of meterage huh but it doesn't look that thick um obviously it's intended to be more than a dk because it's six millimeter needles and it should be about 200 meters to 100 grams for dk so maybe it's like a Templi, like an Aran. Doesn't feel much thicker than a DK weight. So I might actually have to do a little swatch. Or I'm just gonna wing it because it's a blanket. Um, this is in the color Dill. Uh, I did look at quite a few Sage variants, but they looked really bright for Sage. This is a nice duller color. And I like that it's got the white in it, so it's gonna give it a little bit of contrasting color in it which is very nice so i have one two three four five there's more six seven eight nine ten of these so that should be enough to get a decent sized blanket ah so this is the one that i think i'm just going to do a moss stitch because i think That'll lend itself nicely to a the pattern, uh, the yarn, and be just being a cute blanket. I got gifted a tote bag from my principal because she knows that I love stitch and I'm doing a stitch theme classroom. She gifted me this bag, weird but cute. And Emily is also a Disney nut, so I'm going to use that for. Hold on, let's see if I can finagle this. Oop, there goes one. That was successful. There's three, five, seven, nine, ten. I currently have some other bobs and bits in there, so I'll have to take that out. But yeah, that fits in nicely. So I'll, that will be my blanket bag. Nice and big, and I should fit everything in it. All right, and that me leaves my little Wooly Mix package, which was express posted, which is delightful. Um, I wanted to choose express postage for it, but it like didn't give me an option to choose postage and it was express post anyway. So that was nice. So this is just my Bellissimo 8 that I've ordered so I can finish or restart Archer's Blanket. Um, oh, I love this. Hi, Crystal. Thanks so much for your yarn order. I hope you enjoy this lovely wool from Julie and Claire with that beautiful little flower. That is so cute. I'll give that to Bear because she's, um teaching herself to crochet. She's just following like tutorials and stuff on YouTube because I can crochet, very rudimentary crochet, but um, she prefers to learn at her own pace and her own way. So, and I don't know what I'm doing. So she's better off looking at YouTube anyway. So this is a little woolly makes it. They are in Hastings. Um, they have a website, they have Instagram, they have a blog. So yeah, I highly recommend. And I love going there to visit. Um, so yeah, I've got my six balls of yarn in there. It's a weird that I love the smell of these compostable bags. I don't know why. I wonder if I can put these in my worm farm. Hmm. Do not put in your recycle bin. 
So pop it into your home compost and watch it disappear. I don't have a home compost. I do have a worm farm. I love my worm farms. They're, it's getting a bit full. I have very well fed the worms. All right, so that's the beige. This is the sage. And I got some more white as well, even though I hadn't even started knitting with the other whites yet. And the white. So those three colors, and I'll make them into a blanket. I'm going to do, I think I've decided I'm going to do the magic number one again. But yeah, that was the yarn deliveries I was waiting on. So now I can cast on all these projects just so I can have them ready to go throughout the term. I hate casting on. It's my least favorite thing to do. Once the projects are ready to go, I'm all good. But I do hate the casting on process. I love starting new projects. I just hate casting them on. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to go make myself a coffee because it's freezing and it's about four o'clock. Yep. I'm going to need something to get me through the rest of the afternoon. <clears throat> Until I see you next time. I hope your coffee or your tea stays hot or iced, depending on your preferences. I hope that you get all the crafting time you need, all the reading time you want, and that your books are extra smutty. Um, I will see you next time. Bye.